All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome, Antelo. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, you know, I got a vlog for you guys this week. You might notice it's not nighttime. It's actually daytime right now, and my camera is at my daytime video position. This is camera A. Over here is camera B for my vlogs. Just due to various circumstances beyond my control, scheduling conflicts and time management and yada yada, this, that, and the other, I am recording this vlog during the day. Um, it's much easier, much easier to record the vlogs when it's not daylight savings time because usually around like 5 o'clock the sun will go down and I can settle in and shoot my vlog at night and it's, and it's just great. I always like shooting the vlogs at night. But I have to shoot this one during the day. And when there's daylight savings time happening and it stays light until, you know, 8.30 p.m. here, then, you know, it's like, oh, then now I have to sit and shoot my vlog starting at 9 and it takes X amount of hours and then I end up skipping dinner. And it's just this whole big ordeal. So this week, due to a couple, multiple scheduling conflicts, uh, I'm shooting my vlog during the day. No big deal. It's going to be the same vlog, different time of day, different camera angle-ish, but otherwise, yeah, everything's going to be exactly the same. So let me get out my vlog notes and see what we got going on this week. Like I said, I got a whole whole vlog planned for you. Of course, there's going to be some advocacy stuff like there always is right at the top of the program. I think I'm going to have a giveaway later on. Um, of course, we're going to do a beer tasting. Of course, there's going to be shout outs. I do have a whole mess of first impressions to do. I don't have a retro vaping segment prepared this week, unfortunately, but I do have a review for things that never got reviewed and I got a whole mess of comments of the week. I have been screen capping like crazy. Um, I'll probably throw like, you know, three or four fun ones out there for you, but that's going to make up the vlog this week. So first things first, a lot of people are emailing me um, their responses from their senators and representatives. And cool. That's cool. Uh, I, I've been reading them all. I apologize if I don't reply, but what a lot of people are getting and they don't you know, for a lot of people, I mean myself included, for a lot of people, this is the first like political process thing, you know, as far as the FDA regulations go and as far as like New Jersey and Indiana and California where these ridiculous Illinois, where all these ridiculous vape laws are being passed. This is our first time like truly interacting with the political process and getting to know the political process. So a lot of people get these emails back from their senators or representatives and what the email that we get back is generally like a cookie cutter email. It's a form that they sign and send off and they send this same thing to everybody. So people are get confused. They'll forward me their responses from their senators and representatives and be like, "Hey Grim, I don't know what any of this means, but I, you know, I guess I got to reply." And sometimes they seem positive and sometimes they seem a little bit negative. So what you have to do when you're reading these responses from your senators and representatives is remember that these are templates. You know what I mean? These are cookie cutter responses that we're getting back from that person kind of where they stand on certain subjects. And they have a whole mess of these cookie cutters. You know, if someone's writing in and it's like, oh, this is my, you know, vaccination cookie cutter reply. This is my uh, vaping cookie cutter reply. This is my gun control, you know, cookie cutter reply. This is my abortion cookie cutter reply. They have a bunch of these. So when you get back, just read through it. If it seems positive, chances are that person is probably for vaping. And if it seems overwhelmingly negative, like the responses that I got back from my senators, thank you, Barbara Boxer, I can't wait to vote you out of office, then yeah, I mean, she's very, very anti-vaping. And the response back I got from her was very, very anti-vaping. It was very much, we need to keep nicotine away from the children because, oh, nicotine is just literally now, for some reason in America, the worst thing ever. Never mind that there's states left and right legalizing marijuana. Bernie Sanders just said that he supports legalization of recreational marijuana in California. In California. Meanwhile, they want to consider t vaping. They want to consider this box with batteries and this atomizer a tobacco product derived from tobacco. Ah, it's just 
boggles my mind sometimes, you know what I mean? But we all have to keep a level head. So yes, thank you for sending me your Senator responses. I apologize if I don't reply. I do read them, but it's been a lot of Senator and and Representative replies, uh, which is great. That means that people are are getting out there and contacting these people, but the responses can sometimes be a little bit vague. And, uh, you know, I, I understand that. One person Moving forward from that one person that we do have that I have become a very, very big fan of, a fellow named Ron Johnson. I didn't know who Ron Johnson was before someone posted this on uh, Facebook, I believe, but Senator Ron Johnson, he's the chairman of the Senate for uh, chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. Wow. That is a long committee. That is a long, long titled committee. Chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee sent a letter to the Food and Drug Administration, Commissioner Robert Califf, raising concerns about the agency's recent e-cigarette regulation, which could create undue burdens on small businesses and possibly lead to negative unintended health consequences. Yes. Thank you, Senator Ron Johnson. You just became my new hero. Johnson asked the FDA whether it revise its rule if scientific findings indicate that e-cigarettes are safer than traditional cigarettes. And, okay, I'm going to read this last part without trying to rage my face off. Unfortunately, the FDA's attempt to improve the public health by scrutinizing the e-cigarette industry could ultimately result in negative unintended health consequences, Johnson wrote in a letter. The costly impact the rule would have on e-cigarette manufacturers will stifle innovation and make it harder for e-cigarette companies to continue to offer the service as an alternative to smoking. It is possible that without a cost-effective alternative, some consumers will resort to traditional cigarettes. Yes, and saying some consumers is an understatement. The overwhelming majority of vapors will probably return to traditional tobacco cigarettes. I think, um, you know, what we have here in the hobbyist world is the minority, and the majority of vapors aren't involved on, you know, Reddit. They don't belong to vaping Facebook groups. They don't belong to ECF or the vaping underground or any of these hobbyist areas. The majority of them are just people that don't want to smoke and they have a little, you know, Joytech Ego pen that they bought at a gas station. They're like, hey, this is great. I don't have to smoke. And suddenly that goes away and they go, ah, okay, well, I guess I do have to smoke. You know what I mean? It's not some consumers. It's a lot, 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 lot of consumers. So get on Twitter, get on Instagram. Thanks, Senator Ron Johnson for his questioning, his questioning of the FDA deeming regulations, which is brilliant. I hope this sparks some sort of like insane chain reaction where other people in other committees, I mean, this this guy is on the Homeland Security of Governmental Affairs Committee. That it's it's a government position. It has nothing to do with the FDA. He's he's in he's I'm assuming he's probably in like his own office area, like away from the FDA. And I, I really just want to see other representatives, other senators follow suit with Senator Ron Johnson and kind of go, Yeah, that wow, that's actually a really good point. Um, what say you, FDA? So far, the FDA has not replied to Senator Ron Johnson, which I think they should, right? I mean, if we get loud enough and and ask them to reply to Senator Ron Johnson, um, then yeah, that's I think that would be fantastic. Uh, there's This is a whole huge thing. It's the whole letter that he wrote to the FDA. Um, it's giant and long. And, and of course, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he makes a lot of really good points. And I'm going to post a link in the description uh, of this video to the website, hsgac.senate.gov, Johnson, burdensome, FDA, blah, blah, blah. So it'll be much easier. You don't have to type it in. If, could you imagine if we had to type in each URL instead of just clicking on stuff? But click on this link, read it, share it around. Additionally, our, our good friend and ally, Mr. Ron Johnson, Senator Ron Johnson, has a podcast. And I didn't know he had a podcast, but I'll post a link in the description like I'm going to do with that article, soundcloud.com, Senator Ron Johnson, um, 
and he, he d- recently did an episode called Keep Vaping Vicky. And I thought this was a different Vicky. Um, I thought this was a Vicky that I knew, but uh, apparently it's, it's not a Vicky that, that I know. But he uh, has a podcast. It's short. It's like 12 minutes long. He interviews uh, Ricky. Uh, Ricky, Vicky. Why? Why did I say Ricky? This week, Senator Ron Johnson sat down with Wisconsin radio talk show host Vicky to chat about why she enjoys e-cigarettes and what the FDA e-cigarette regulation could mean for vape shops and their customers. So, go to this SoundCloud. Go to Twitter. Thank Senator Ron Johnson for his support. A lot of people get on Twitter and Instagram and start, you know, reposting this. And if I post something and then it just gets reposted, you you have to go back to the original source. You have to go back to Senator Ron Johnson and just thank him for doing what he's doing. And I've said this before, but like uh, Commissioner Jim Gordon in Gotham City, there are good people within a corrupt system. And that's something that I have to keep repeating to myself over and over again because I get stressed out, beyond stressed out. I've been having stress dreams. I have not had an appetite. This whole FDA thing has been consuming me. And I'll get like panicky just at the end of the day when I'm sitting on the couch trying to watch, you know, Rick and Morty or The Flash or something. And I'm like, I have all these thoughts like going through my head like, well, shit, you know, what about this, that and the other and this? And I hope that, oh, gosh, and tomorrow I'm going to I'm going to do this, this and this and I'm going to make a a graphic and we're going to talk about this in the vlog. And it is literally consuming me. It it gets overwhelming. And so what we need to do is pause and Think about the fact that there are good people, Senator Ron Johnson, good people within a corrupt system. That's That's been my like calm down, like yes, there are good people within a corrupt system, good people, good people, there are good people. And in the end, I, I truly do believe that real science, the science that already exists, good, true, real science will prevail. So... Like I said, I'm going to post the link in the description to the letter that he wrote to the FDA as well as to his podcast, Keep Vaping Vicky uh, by Senator Ron Johnson. I haven't l- listened to any of his other podcasts. Oh, he has two. This is the second episode is Keep Vaping Vicky. The first one's only five minutes long and he talks about how he'd love to be out fishing. Sure. There you go. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ron Johnson. Additionally, there was someone on uh, the news. What was his name? Ben Swan. So what I'm going to link it to in the description is Ben Swan's Instagram. He has, uh, he's a journalist and he has a, uh, well, I'm just going to. So it turns out the FDA has decided that in all of its great wisdom, it needs to regulate and control the e-cigarette market. If you don't know a lot about e-cigarettes, we're going to explain in my new reality check the difference between the traditional cigarette and the e-cigarette, why e-cigarettes are so much safer, and at the end of the day, why smoking, traditional smoking, which we know causes cancer and kills people, is actually down to a 20-year low, and most researchers say it's because of e-cigarettes, and yet the FDA... They've got to have their hands in it now. We're going to talk about how their plans would actually stifle and even badly injure the e-cigarette market. You can see the whole thing in my brand new reality check. I'm posting it right now on my Facebook page. Just search for Ben Swan. That's right. So we're going to go on Google. We're going to search for Ben Swan. We're going to watch all of his reality checks about electronic cigarettes. The guy's got a good head on his shoulders and... He's actually speaking the truth, stuff that we have been saying. Now this is a news media outlet saying these same things. So I'm going to post a link in the description to his Instagram. From there, you'll be able to find everything else that Ben Swan does. And again, thank him. Thank you, Ben Swan, for having the reality check and honestly having the balls to speak out against the FDA. What they're doing is ridiculous, and we all know it, and it feels good to have good people Ben Swan, Senator Ron Johnson on our side. So absolutely, like I said, I'll post some links down in the description. Let me uh, let me see what else I have planned. Um, that's, someone sent me a interesting article, and you know what? I, I'm going to save that for next week. I am going to save that for next week. We're already 15 minutes into this freaking vlog, and uh, I've, I've already been just talking talking crazy talk like a crazy person but yeah i'll have links all down in the description what i want to do now is uh 
move forward from that and talk about what I have been vaping over the last, uh, you know, oh, a week or so. My last vlog was that VPX travel vlog. I hope everybody enjoyed Bro Trip 5. Uh, I know I did. I had a great time in Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, it was one of those you go to Vegas and you're still, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a of a break, a little bit of a, you know, I don't know, I don't want to say break, but yeah, a little bit of a break from the whole advocacy thing. And then you're just right back in it. There was so many vendors and so many people to I was talking to about advocacy, but you kind of get away from it a little a little bit as soon as you get back home, you get thrown thrown right back into the uh, into the thick of it. So I want to talk about what I've been vaping. I haven't done this since the last sit down vlog. I think that was the point of my last statement, but I do want to talk about what I've been vaping. So yeah, not a whole lot of surprises here. I'm still vaping that anarchist. Aria Beyond Vape Solara DNA 200. I love it. It's just cool. I just love the feel of it. I love the fit and finish of it. This is the Goon RDA on top, which I do like the Goon. I've been vaping it a lot, obviously. I love the vape I get from it. Just not a huge, huge fan of building it. And I think I'm going to do a review for the Goon very, very soon because I've thrown a couple builds on here. I've gotten used to the way, you know, you drip, the way you vape. It's it's just fantastic. This is a this is a, a DHD Double Helix Designs cap little tip that I got at VPX Vegas because I rock the Goon on this mod so much. I wanted it to be, you know, look at that. It's just matchy matchy and green can you see the green colors green silver green black i don't know it looks cool of course dhd all the things i just put stickers uh on everything i guess but this is with lane cove Mai. i this is no surprise i vape so much of this juice it's almost ridiculous it's almost ridiculous i'm on my since vpx las vegas this is my third 30 mil and it's halfway gone and I've just I vape it like crazy uh, the other night I was sitting on the couch and I told Pickle I was like my E is all I want to vape ever <laughs> it's all I ever want to vape ever for the rest of my life I just love it I know that it's not going to be for everybody but ha huh, man I just love it so much even painfully over dripped I still love it So yeah, that's been awesome. Uh, I've been vaping that hooligan box a lot. Um, I do have a super secret atomizer on top that I can't show you or talk about just yet, but this is that hooligan box with the, uh, he put my grim green on there. I'll link down in the description to his Facebook. I think I'm also going to do a review for this very soon. I have been using it a lot, just a whole lot. It's a super reliable mod. Um, the juice that I have on here, I'm going to make sure that's not on camera. The juice I have in here is uh, the Cupcake Man. This is a pretty simple build. This is a 22 gauge Nichrome uh, Anarchist build. It's came out to 0.17. I think it's a nine wrap on a three millimeter. It's great. The vape that I'm getting from this is fantastic, but again, I can't show you the atomizer, so hashtag sorry, not sorry. Good. Oh, it's good. So yeah, that's been a nice little vape. Um, we're going to talk about this in the first impressions. I actually have not been vaping this very much. We're going to talk about this in the first impressions, but man, that Limitless, the RDTA, whatever, their cotton Genesis hybrid dripper nonsense has been fucking awesome. I did not think I would like this as much as I do. I built it with the included coils, the little twisted, I, I think it's twisted 28 gauge or twisted 26 gauge, built it on there. I close the airflow exactly halfway down and I, and I get juice everywhere. Close the airflow exactly halfway down and it's stellar. This is a stellar vape. I don't know if I just got lucky the first time, but it has been wicking just like a champion, just perfectly. I look down and my tank is dry and my wicks in there are dry. And I'm like, dang, this vaped all the juice out of that tank. Now, what I did is I added a, uh, a Kennedy drip tip. This is for the, for the Kennedy RDAs because I don't like this little black, uh, shorty guy, little Delrin thing. And the Kennedy tip, oh, it happens to just 
press in there so well, it stays in there just fine. It doesn't slip out or anything, and it just makes that drip tip a little bit longer, and it looks kind of cool. You know what I mean? It's like silver, black, silver, black, and then black, and you know, you, you got to be matchy-matchy, right? The juice I have in here is that mix that I do of my own liquids, and I have a big, long, funny story about this juice, but... I was vaping Oasis Mist one day from the Epiclouds line in a dripper, and I accidentally dripped a bunch of Glacier Banana on top right after I had dripped some Oasis Mist on there, and I took a vape, and I was like, what? This tastes freaking delicious. <laughs> it was so hilarious, and I'm like, I just want to mix it. So what I did is I got a 30 ml unicorn bottle, and I got two bottles, Oasis Mist and Glacier Banana, and just went like 50-50 into this bottle, shook it all up, started dripping that. It was amazing. And the bummer part is we can't recreate this flavor without mixing the two finished products. Like we took the recipes for these juices and mixed them and then bottled them together. Wasn't the same. It just wasn't the same. So the only way to experience this juice that doesn't even have a name yet is to buy Oasis Mist Glacier Banana, mix them together 50-50, and then you'll get to experience this. It's like banana, tropical, menthol, fruity. It's delicious. Oh, my gosh, it's delicious. It's one of my favorite juices, and it's not even a real juice, and that's my favorite part. But this has been awesome. I don't know what the resistance is, but uh, this box is running at 3.7 volts. So there you go. Just the airflow, just the airflow alone on this is so great. It's so smooth. I love a good smooth airflow. This airflow on this Limitless, ha, it's so smooth. And the flavor is actually really stellar as well. So second to last thing, uh, still rocking that. Kennedy uh, Roundhouse combo. When I first got this, I thought it was a Ruby mod. Turns out it's not a Ruby mod because I'm an idiot. I I told this whole story. If you listen to the uh, if you listen to the Culture of Clouds podcast, I I already told this whole story on the podcast. But I got this. I thought it was a Ruby. Uh, turns out that it's just a Kennedy 24 millimeter atomizer on top of a Roundhouse Mech mod. But you know, come on. I got that, and I'm like, that's a Kennedy. I mean, that's a Ruby. It looks like a Ruby. It's got the switch. It's got Everything in my mind says this is a ruby until when I went to clean it and the atomizer actually screwed off of the mech mod and I went, oh, right, that's not what I think it is. Still, pretty rockin' vape. This is the uh, Mui Liquids Banana Milk. I'm down to my last bottle of this and I dig it. I dig it a lot. I first got this in the UK and the Mui Liquids Banana Milk is just, uh, just a stellar vape. This is a Brad's cap, Brad's cap on top there. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's so good. The flavor on that Kennedy 24 is surprisingly good. Um, so yeah, last thing, RX200S, the Relo RX200S. Um, mine's been kicking ass. It's been awesome. I just, I liked the Relo. I like the Relo S. It's got the same clicky buttons, same feel to it, this different screen. One thing I've noticed is that my screen is sometimes getting really warm with like excessive use. Like the rest of the mod stays nice and cool, but for some reason my screen area has been getting really, really warm. Uh, I have it topped right now with the Indie Duo RDA, which I am a big fan of. Uh, probably I'm gonna probably gonna review this next week actually. Indie Duo RDA, uh, Jess Marie DHD cap on top happens to fit the Indie Duo perfectly. This is that DIY, uh, you know, banana flavor that my buddy John makes that I really like, and it's interesting because. This is a banana flavor. The Moo E Liquids is a banana flavor. Uh, there's banana in the Limitless. I like banana, apparently. And I like the differences in banana. Like that Moo E Liquids is definitely like a creamier, milky banana. This banana is very much like banana bread, like a bakery banana bread with like nuts and, and sweetness and banana-ness. And I just, I really like it. I don't know if I have this adjusted correctly. 0.22 ohms. I'm going to turn the wattage up on this just because I can. 0.22 ohms, 93 watts, 4.5 volts, boom, roasted. I love that Indie Duo RDA, man. I can't wait to review that thing next week. Next week we're going to make that happen. So, yeah. 
that's yeah, that's more or less what I've been vaping. There's a couple other things. I have that 24 millimeter, uh, you know, Sub Zero RDA on top of my Axis Vapes M17 that's getting charged currently right now. There's a couple other things. I've actually been vaping some of my first impressions quite a bit as well, but we're not there. We're not there yet. What we have to do before we get to shout outs and before we get to the first impressions, does anybody know? Show of hands. Comment if you raised your hand. That's right, we're going to the beer section. So yeah, the beer that I have to taste this week, nothing like day drinking. I I did some day drinking yesterday too, and it was, you know... Day drinking is one of those things that it's fun every once in a while, but on the regular, yeah, I don't know. I mean, day drinking's fine, but getting like day drunk, that's it's always just a weird experience. Um, my my so uh, pickle, she runs CaseyHeartsCocktails.com, and so when she shoots videos. Um, I end up drinking the cocktails that she makes. And so yesterday she was shooting video and I'm sitting around and she's like, here, drink this one. And I'm like, okay, oh, that's delicious. Shot another video, here, drink this one. I'm like, oh, okay, that's delicious. Delicious? Yeah, I said that. And then I stand up and I'm like, whoa, Pickle, what are you doing? And she's like, well, you just drank like nine solid ounces of alcohol. And I'm like, well, thanks. I hope it was worth it. I hope those videos get like 100 views each because they injured my kidneys. Kidneys? No. Is that what you use to filter alcohol? Yeah, kidneys, I guess. No, your liver. Kidney. Liver? Huh. I guess I don't know much about the human body right now. Anyway, the beer that I have to taste this week comes from Estonia. A fella sent it to me. A fella named Alex sent me a little handwritten note as well. Well, not handwritten. I mean, it's it's typed, but there you go. He writes to me and says, what's up, bro? First of all, just let me apologize for not writing uh, in hand, but I felt it would be unfair for you to suffer through my terrible handwriting, which can only be described as cuneiform. I don't know what that word means, Alex, but I'm assuming it means junky or bad. As promised, here is your surprise gift. I truly hope it reached you. If not, then you wouldn't be reading this right now, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Alex is on his game here. Even more so, I hope it arrived undamaged. That would be a bummer if it was damaged. The contents are simple, but I think you will like it quite a lot. Here are your favorite sweets, of which there are plenty. Enough to get by for a while, anyway, if you ration it. So Alex, in addition to this beer that I'm about to taste, sent me just a whole mess of Kinder Buenos. Kinder Buenos are, thanks to Ronan and Sarah from Ireland... They are my favorite thing ever on earth now. I went to Vape Fest Ireland last year, and Ronan was like, oh, have you ever had Kinder Buenos? And I'm like, nope. And we were in some weird Tesco Irish shopping place, and both he and Sarah were like, oh, you got to try Kinder Buenos. That's my Irish accent. It's dumb, right? Okay, it's dumb. Oh, you got to try Kinder Buenos. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I bought a bunch. I got back to my hotel room late that night, and I was hungry, and I broke open Kinder Buenos, and I was like, ha, ah, ha, ha, what? This is amazing. And so it's no secret. I love Kinder Buenos, and he sent me a bunch. He sent me like eight three-packs. It was ridiculous, and uh, I am trying to ration them, but they're Kinder Buenos, man. I tear through those like crazy. So he says... Um, Of course, I thought you might like to try a beer from my country. I doubt you will have another chance to get it all the way out there in case you like to mark out on a wall map. Okay, which country's beer you've tried? You can tick this one off. It's probably fairly rare in the States or at least rare-ish. Anyway, the the beer I've chosen for you is Sakutumi. Sakutumi. Yes, the beer is called Sakutumi, which translates into Saku Dark, as I gather. It's a Dobbelbach type beer. Saku is a beer factory in Estonia that makes it. One of the biggest ones in our country and brewing since 1820. So they have some history in there as well. I don't know if you can find it on Beer Advocate, but you could give it a try. You do not have to, but if you wish, you can use the bl- uh, use it for your vlog as well. I would be honored, but you are a free man to choose what you do with it. And of course, at the end of the day, I just hope you like it. Anyway, I'll stop now. I'll let you enjoy the contents of the package. Greetings and all the best. Your friend, Alex. And he signed it at the bottom, your friend, Alex. And Alex, your handwriting isn't bad. I feel like I could have 
maybe got through a letter that you wrote me. But Alex, honestly, thank you so much. Um, I don't often get to try beers from Estonia. In fact, I think this is the first beer I've ever tried from Estonia. And I think Alex knows me well enough. He knows that I don't like corks because hashtag cork fear. This has a this has a, just a regular bottle cap on top. Open it with my green snap on. <laughs> a green snap-on bottle opener. So what I'm going to be doing is pouring this beer into a freshly rinsed out Grim Army style, Grim Army tulip style glass. That's that's what I meant to say. Someone gave me that tip earlier and I was like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's what I see him doing at like brewery tasting rooms. Like when I go down to Ballast Point or Stone or something like that, they always go and like rinse out the inside of the cup and I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that at home. I'm going to be just like Ballast Point at home. Anyway, Sakutumi. Sakutumi. I can't think of anything other than socket to me, but uh, I know that's not what they intended. This beer is darker than I thought it would be. Got a nice, nice tan sort of head on there. It smells, it smells good. It smells, maybe it's the name. Maybe it's the name, but Sakutumi reminds me of something I would get at a sushi place. And so I'm getting this like overwhelming sushi sensation. It's something, it feels like something I should be pairing with sushi, even though it came with Estonia. And it's just because it's called Sakutumi that it makes me think of sake, I guess. I think that's where I'm going with this. Anyway, clicking over to Beer Advocate, it's actually got a pretty good score. It's got an 83. The beer is a clear, dark amber in color. Sure. Uh, it's, yeah, it's slightly translucent there. Poured with a two-finger high beige head that quickly died down into a thin layer of bubbles that consistently covered the surface. A high amount of carbonation or effervescence. A high amount of carbonation is evident from the rising bubbles. The smell is rather malty and sweet. It has notes of dark breads and dark fruits. Yes, malty. That's what I was trying to think of. Malty. There's a moderate amount of sweetness on the overall taste, which becomes stronger as the beer warms up. It has flavors of caramel, dark fruits, and toffee in the finish, and a very slight amount of bitterness. It feels light to medium bodied with a smooth on the palate and is a bit watery. Medium bodied and watery don't go together. Well, body is how something feels in your mouth. And I'm sure I've said this at least a bajillion times before, but prior to my career as a whatever I am now. I worked uh, for Starbucks Coffee Company and I was a coffee taster for three years and it's a complete sensory job. All you're doing all day long is smelling, 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 tasting, slurping, and evaluating. So we had to evaluate things like body and body is a hard characteristic to pick out of a liquid. And the easiest way to think of it is like water has a very low body and milk has a very thick body. When you're just focusing on how the liquid feels in your mouth, which I know sounds dirty and a lot of people's minds went there, including mine, but if you just focus on body, it's kind of a difficult characteristic to get. So for you to say that it's medium bodied, but a bit watery, eh, I guess, I guess that kind of makes sense. If you can get past the sweetness, this beer isn't difficult to drink because the taste of alcohol is well masked. So anyway, here you go, Alex. Here's to you. Thank you so much. Saku to me. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely carbonated, effervescent. It does have that dark fruit sweetness like a fig or a raisins or a green raisins, you know, green raisins. It kind of has like that green raisin, dark fruit, fig, date sort of sweetness going on. It's really nice. It is really... Uh, very light bodied. I, I think calling it medium body would be generous. It is very clean and watery. It does not have a thick mouthfeel to it. And it does have a lot of that, like, uh, like I said, dark, dark, low notes, what we call low notes, like date, fig, darker, darker flavors in there. Um, I don't know what I would pair this with. Let's try Mai. I don't know. Why not? Because Mai is a black currant, right? Black currant, dark fruits, dates. Uh, I don't know. Could be a thing. Let's give it a shot. And I know I don't need to drip on this because I over dripped on it when I was doing the What I've Been Vaping segment. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not amazing. Um, Yig. 
<laughs> Yig would go amazing with this, but I don't have, let me grab, uh, let me, sorry, let me grab Yig real fast because I know it's going to go great with this. All right, so I have, Yig. whoa, look at that. Look at that accidental matchy matchy right there. That's the Axis Vapes M17, Twisted Messes Square, DHD cap on top. That kind of works. That kind of looks cool together. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, pardon me. Robin, sorry, Sheik. So sorry, Sheik. Anyway, 0.13 ohm dual fused Clapton on here. I believe it's a dual fused Clapton. 86 watts, sure. Let's try it with Sakutumi. Amazing. Perfect. Whew. That is the that is the pairing I was after. That like fig date flavor in there goes along with this like black currant oatmeal cookie flavor. They are complementing each other really well. This beer actually brings out that oatmeal cookie component of this juice. Wow, quite a bit. This is a great pairing. I like it so much I'm gonna do it again. Wow, that is crazy. Good. Good beer pairing. Good beer pairing. So thank you. Thank you, Alex, uh, for for sending that my way. And you're right. I would have not otherwise been able to taste a beer called Sakutumi from Estonia, but I'm glad I got to. I'm super glad I got to. I'm going to keep this set up around. I'm going to keep this Twisted Messes on that M17 and really like it. And uh, thank you for the letter. Absolutely. It gets filed in my second drawer here, along with some other letters and documentation. But uh, thank you so much. After the beer section, you know what we have to do? It is shout out time. It is shout out time. All right, so we got a couple shout outs to do here. Uh, this first one comes from Japan. Colin writes to me and says, Hey, Grim, I'm just wondering if you could give us a shout out. We've recently started a website, vapingjapan.com, to try and educate the people of Japan about vaping. Me and my colleague get asked every other day what we are doing when vaping, and we try to explain it, but it just isn't easy. Smoking is like a hobby here. There are many people who think it's illegal to get Nick juice and they cannot slash won't even try, but the truth is it's not. Japan is an up and coming vape community. We aim to provide good info for foreigners and the Japanese. We're in the process of getting bilingual double page site. There are limits for importation of nicotine, but it's not that bad. A huge amount of people watch you, including us, and it would be great if you could highlight our site for people in Japan. There are a few articles up at the moment we are working hard to get the site fully functional. Anything we can do to educate the people living here would be great and get them vaping instead of smoking. We have a Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, etc. And understandably, the Chinese companies are not replying to us for product reviews as we don't have a huge following at the moment. And there is no way we are buying everything just for reviews. Lol. So we keep trying. Take care, bro. And to keep the videos flowing, we love them. Colin, Colin Dixon, editor, reviewer, vaping japan.com so yeah what i'm gonna do is link in the description uh looks like vaping japan doesn't exist um hmm okay uh i don't know what to tell you uh vaping japan does not exist i'm clicking your link it's taking me to a landing page where there is a black graphic of nothing and then it just says vapingjapan.com, and then there's nothing there. So, Colin, <laughs> Colin, if you are watching this, maybe maybe I spelled it wrong. No, nope, it's the same link. Okay, it doesn't work. Colin, if you're watching this, get me some more information. Vapingjapan.com. It's not working. I'll post a link to it in the description, but it's absolutely, totally, totally, totally not working. And uh, I thought this sounded pretty cool. And, yeah, wanted to give you a shout-out, but... Website it looks like it's uh pff, website looks like it's down for the count, buddy. So yeah, hit me back please with uh with some more information there. Moving on, I got another shout out here from David. So David writes to me and says, Nick, my name is David, and I'm all good with you sharing this anywhere and using my names I'm giving you. I'm a 19 year old and I had my first cigarette when I was eleven. Ah, wow, wow. 11 years old, and I'm a huge fan of you, and I would love to say that because of you, I'd quit smoking with the Inokin VV version 3 on January 5th, 2015. My mother's story I wanted to share with you because probably without you, she wouldn't be in my life today. My mother has leukemia, anemia, neuropathy, 
and she had finally kicked her 35-year habit on Thanksgiving 2014. She was admitted into Frederick Memorial Hospital around Halloween about two weeks later. She was transferred to Johns Hopkins because of an enormous blood clot in her aorta and her heart. The doctor said it was caused by her addiction to Marlboro's for so long, and the doctor said that she wouldn't see another year if she didn't quit smoking. There you go. I mean... Wow, that's insane. I was looking online for ideas on how to help her quit online and the gum and the patch and the pills and none of them worked for her. I looked into YouTube and found your videos. I think I had the Vamo and the Tesla mod in it. I was looking at that kind of stuff for her and I persuaded her to get her first mod, which was an Ego Twist starter kit. Ego Twist is a game changer. Now she has something much better with a Target mod and a Ceramicus tank, and I'd just really like to thank you for everything, because today is May 1st, 2016, and I wouldn't have her in my life without you. If you could please give my mother Lucille a shout-out on one of your vlogs, absolutely, Lucille, you are shouted out, and share her story. It would be much appreciated. Thank you very much, and as always, let's keep on vaping. Absolutely. David, you are shouted out. Lucille, you are shouted out. Welcome to the club. Welcome to vaping. Welcome to not smoking anymore. And this is exactly, you know, Greg Gutfield. Uh, people get weirded out when I say my favorite guy on Fox News, but overwhelmingly, Fox News supports vaping. <laughs> you might hate Fox News and Bill O'Reilly and idiots like that. But overwhelmingly, Fox News supports vaping, and there's a guy on there, Greg Gutfield, who said on Twitter that vaping will save more lives than seatbelts. And he did this whole rant talking about how if we had vaping 10, 15, 20 years ago, many of our mothers, fathers, grandmothers, and grandfathers would still be alive today rather than, you know, uh, being in the hospital for blood clots in their aorta because of smoking Marlboros for so long. Come on, US FDA, get with it, man. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much, David, for uh, for sharing your story with me. Do have another one here from Dylan. So Dylan writes to me and says, hey, Nick, how are you? My name is Dylan. I've been watching you for as long as I've been serious about vaping. That's right. You are an awesome guy. I love the vlogs. I'm always waiting for it each Thursday. As soon as I get home from my job, I sit down and watch. If you could shout out my parents, Jen and Johnny. My brother, my mother, pardon me, my mother has been smoking for over 20 years and had uh, whoops. My mother had been smoking for over 20 years and had had B try vaping with the blue e cig. Nothing seemed to work, so I did my research and I got her a mod about nine months ago. She hasn't turned back since, and I'm so happy for her. I keep pushing her. My stepdad soon followed suit, and now we all sit down and watch the vlog, and they learn so much. We have been big advocates for vaping. Uh, we all contacted our representatives, and my mom got a response. Sorry for the rambling. Anyway, you're awesome. Glad to meet you at Vape Mania. It would mean the world to my parents if we could get a shout out for their hard work and keeping away from the cancer sticks my mom is almost one year smoke free that's awesome hopefully i can get this into the vlog uh, so they can get even more motivation absolutely dylan you know what don't sell yourself short you're shouted out as well john nope jenny and john absolutely uh welcome to vaping jenny congratulations on your one year of being smoke free the, the and i always say this to a lot of people the days that you're smoke free the days turn into weeks turn into months turn into years and before you know it you're smoke free for years i have been tobacco free smoke free cigarette free for over seven years now and it's not something i thought i could ever be able to do without vaping. I mean, there's just there's just not a chance. When I was a smoker, I was just going to smoke. <laughs> and that's how it was. I was just going to smoke until I smoked myself into a little box in the ground. And uh, yes, that's awesome. Absolutely. You guys are all shouted out. All shouted out. Let me get to, I have, uh, I don't know, let's do two more. Got uh, Anders, or maybe it's Anders, because I watch too much Workaholics. My name is Anders, and I live in Rockford, Illinois, and yes, you can use my name and other and any other info I share with you. I would like you to shout out my local shop, Vapen Juice. They are some of the most honest and trustworthy people I have ever met. Even though I have been vaping for a year and a half, I still have questions that may seem stupid to some local shop employees. They never made me feel stupid for asking me for me asking seemingly stupid questions. There are no stupid questions. The only stupid question is the one that goes unasked. They are the only local shop that I know of that is actively fighting for our rights to vape. One of the owners, I think his name is Jeremy, is in Washington right now. I wanted you to shout them out because I am proud to be one of their customers. 
absolutely Anders Anders. Your whole shop, Vape and Juice, over there in Rockford, Illinois, is absolutely shouted out. And Jeremy, if that is the owner's name, then yes, he is shouted out. Ooh, he is shouted out as well. So let's get let's get rid of these emails. Let's move on to uh, the last shout out of the night. So the last shout out of the night comes from Sir Vapes a lot, and he has started a sort of movement group type of situation. I apologize, let me move my microphone. Movement group sort of situation on Facebook called Vape Strong. And so he makes t-shirts. Buy one of the Vape Strong t-shirts uh, to help fight cancer and spread the word about vaping and the benefits over smoking. The colors are gray, black, and white. Uh, extra small to two extra large. Each shirt sold is more money that goes to cancer research. So spread the word. Um, email vape to the culture at outlook.com and place an order and payment information in. Thank you again. We are making the difference one t-shirt at a time. So basically he's selling these t-shirts and he sent me a t-shirt and I probably should be wearing it, but I'm not. And it's got this like, uh, you know, look at that logo on it. I'm trying not to cover up my microphone. It says vape strong and it's got this, I don't know what this squiggly thing is. I've looked at it from a thousand different angles and I kind of, just have no idea what it is. I don't know if it's like a vapor cloud type of situation going on there. On the white t-shirts, it kind of looks like a vapor cloud, but on the black t-shirts, it kind of looks like a red swirly thing. And up here, like this looks like a harp. Does anybody else see like a harp right there? It looks like a harp right here. And then there's like a swirly thing. Anyway, it says vape strong. They're pretty cool t-shirts. Um, they're printed on Hanes Beefy Tees. They're a little bit plasticky, but, uh, you know, it's, it's good t-shirt going to a good cause. So yeah, absolutely. Sir Clanks a lot. You are shouted out. I'll post a link in the description to the Facebook page where you can get a shirt if you wanted to. They're 30 bucks, but, uh, the money goes to, the money goes to cancer research, which is, uh, you know, which is, probably a pretty very very cool thing so thank you sir vapes a lot for the t-shirt i think what i'm going to do is wrap up these shout outs right now i really want to get into these first impressions because oh baby there are a whole bunch of them and some of them some of them are pretty bad which is always much more entertaining when things than when things are really good right so anyway let's get over to some first impressions finger guns i need fuel all right, so first things first, let's talk about this because it's just right in front of me. Remember, I had the Limitless on top of this Sub Ohm Box version 2. Now, I have a couple of these to give away, and you know what? It's not awful, okay? My job as a reviewer, whatever, youtube guy is to be really critical with things, maybe more so than the average person would be, but... I kind of feel like I have to really dig in and nitpick these devices and mods and tanks and atomizers into the ground. Like that's just part of my job. And when I look at this box on local vape and it has the anarchist, I'm like, that looks so effing cool. And then when I got it in my hand, I was a little bit let down by this, right? So this is the sub ohm box version two. I believe this is a OKL chip in here. It's essentially a hexome. Okay. It's like a hexome with a worse button and still in a Hammond box. I don't believe this to be a custom enclosure. I believe this, if it's not a Hammond box, then they made it look exactly like the Hammond box, even to the point of replicating the lean on top. So once upon a time, way back in the day of vaping, we, uh, we used Hammond boxes and they were just metal project boxes that had numerous multiple uses and we made them into mods and they were angled on the top, slightly angled at the top. So when you put your 510 on there, your atomizer would sit crooked. This limitless, has that Hammond lean, man. It is leaning way back. And this doesn't look like a Hammond box, like I said, but if they replicated that Hammond lean, why would they replicate the Hammond lean? It was one of the most annoying things about using a Hammond box. And then when we move forward into more better, more better, yeah. Ugh, I just said that and I just burped. Ugh, thanks. Ugh. Every time I burp and talk, I feel like Rick. Anyway, uh, Rick and Morty, sub ohm box version two that's what we're talking about sub ohm box version two it's got that cool vape like they're watching graphic on there and then they put 
sort of an oddly placed Grim Army logo on there. And I have, pardon me, I have a couple of these that I'm going to be giving away. And like I said, it's not a bad box. If you have no mods and you get this mod, it'll probably be fine. It'll probably vape great for you. But like I said, it's kind of my job to nitpick stuff like this. So the first thing I noticed, the door has a fuck ton of play up and down, side to side. You hear it? clicking it just clicks around additionally when I pop the door off I got to look at the internals and there's plastic up here right to cover all the internals and I'm like wow that looks pretty nice and all this is all the wires are taped up and there's a ribbon on the inside and he sent me some new sub ohm cell batteries which I have a bunch of to give away as well and so I popped my batteries in there first thing that came off that plastic cover it just popped right off it seems to be glued in on one side the other side has no glue and one side has glue and it just i popped my batteries in and this went bunk and just whatever fell out which is weird and i'm like oh that's so chintzy when you put a battery in a mod the the the, the plastic cover over your electronics over your wiring isn't supposed to fall off and mine just fell off 510 in here, it's a spring-loaded 510. All the wiring looks fine. There's a big chip in here in the back, and that's adjusted right here. There's a little potentiometer right here. And so, like I said, you can see your display. This is running at 3.7 uh, volts. It's a, well, I better put the plastic covering back on because I don't want to lose that because when I do an actual review, then that's when I need to show that the plastic covering fell off. Whoops, and it's backwards and upside down. Okay, okay. So, like I said, the vape on it is fine. It's the same vape that I would get from any other dual 18650 regulated, like PWM or non PWM, hexohm style hooligan box, you know, vape, which is to say it's fine. These coils at 3.7 are fine. In fact, I might turn this up just a little bit. Let's turn it up to 50 watts. It's giving me 4.1 volts. Sure, there you go. Vape I'm getting from it is fine. Door, fuck ton of play. The box itself leans back. The 510 does not sit flush, which means when I'm using a 24 millimeter atomizer on here, there's the box that ends and then there's the 510 and then the atomizer comes out past the, the 510 connection on there. The button, junky. I hate this button. It's just a slightly mushy horn style switch. It's not clicky like the MyTech switches. Oh. That click, non-existent. Even on the Relo, that click, non-existent. Even on the Anarchist box, that click, non-existent. Even on the Hexome, that has a nice clicky button. This is a very mushy button. But what this does that a lot of other Hammond-style boxes don't do is it's a five-click on, five-click off. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, right? Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it does have a five click, five on, five on, five off situation. So I can, okay, I, what? Come on, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now it's not firing. I'm pressing down the button, it's not firing. Let me press the button again. Okay, it's still not firing. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and now it's back on. Wow, okay, well, sure. So it, it kind of has a five on, five off situation. It's been fine. It's just, it feels like a janky box, man. It's 120 bucks. <sighs> like, okay, like with all my first impressions, I'm going to spend some more time with this. Maybe I'm going to get used to things, or I don't know, maybe it'll somehow get better. The fit and finish on it does leave a lot to be desired. Even looking around the edge, the body of the mod is like slightly bigger than the door. I feel like this was a door and a and a, and a and a body from two different mods and they put them together there's like an edge all the way around there's an edge down here these don't fit together very well at all and my potentiometer is crooked and you're not going to be able to see it on camera but it doesn't sit flush with the mod the screen sits nice and perfectly flush the potentiometer is just crooked up on one side and i can feel it and grab it right there it adjusts fine but it just doesn't 
sit flush. It's these little things that go into making a mod that make it feel like a nicer mod. If this little plastic hadn't fallen out and the door fit on there better and it didn't have the lean and my potentiometer was flush, I would be like, yeah, this is a cool, you know, dual 18650 regulated 100 watt $120 mod that is you know pretty cool but it's all these little things that add up that make me dislike this thing so much just so much so much that I'm over it I don't even want to use it right now so we're gonna set that aside we're gonna move on to another first impression so what I've got here this is the tugboat 24 so it's no secret I was a huge huge fan of the original tugboat and tugboat version 2 atomizers. I liked them because they were simple. It was a three post deck with a nice deep juice well, great airflow, great flavor. That was it. That's what I liked about them. It's because they were simple. And then the tugboat V3 came out and just made me so sad because it was so bad. Oh, it was so bad. I didn't even want to review it. I didn't even want to use it. It was just a terrible atomizer. Don't buy the Tugboat version 3. So then Flawless released the Tugboat 24, which is essentially a Kennedy. I mean, it's kind of their version of a Kennedy. It's kind of a cross between the Kennedy and the Tsunami RDA. It's got a two-post non-velocity style deck, but it's got that bottom in airflow. You can see the airflow there and it goes up. I have some coil turd coils in here actually they came out to like 0.14 it's great on this titan box the airflow is nice i like that the top comes off so you can see down in there and you just boop pop it back on there this is the sour watermelon juice from nectar vapes really delicious and so far so far so good man it's been really nice The airflow's good. It reminds me of the Kennedy airflow. I mean, this is the Kennedy airflow. The airflow that Mr. Steve the Machinist over there at Kennedy Vapor thought of for the Kennedy 24. It feels exactly, exactly the same. Slight different tone, though, in the airflow. Do you notice that? This has like a lower uh, tone, and this has a higher like uh, tone. Anyway, the airflow feels exactly the same. Nice airflow. It's got a decent build deck on there. I had no problem fitting these coil turd coils on there. It needs a little bit of room for wicking, and I'm worried about the longevity of these posts. And I can't show you this because there's a build on it. But the way they did the two post design is the negative is milled right into the deck, right? And then the positive over here is over here and then it's sitting on an arm that goes down to the middle and in the middle is just round. Mm. You know what happens sometimes with round positive pins not milled into the deck and not squared off with any sort of insulation? They spin and this is a top Phillips head screwdriver thing and so I didn't run into this problem yet and I hope I never do but I have a feeling if I crank down on that positive pin if I'm putting like a big alien in there or something whoop it's gonna spin that post around and that that slightly terrifies me in fact it is slightly offset right now it's sitting a little bit forward on one side I and I think that's from building on it but the airflow is good. The construction of it is nice. I like this top part that comes off. Um, I would like to see other chuff style caps. That he gave me a Delrin one as well. Um, the edges of this are very, very sharp. <laughs> when you take this chuff cap off right there, that is a sharp edge. This right here is a sharp edge. Inner O-ring. This pops down and every time I pop it down, I get a little bit of juice that kind of gushes out of there just from being wet and juicy but like I said the airflow is great the flavor that I'm getting from it is actually really nice it's kind of weird that flawless would replicate clone I don't know the Kennedy 
right? I mean, the Kennedy was first. That's the first atomizer that did this style airflow where it goes through these little like pill-shaped holes and in and up, and then you pop your top off and you have your deck and everything like that. It's kind of weird that they cloned that same airflow for their, their flagship RDA. The tugboat is like the flawless flagship RDA. I feel like it should be a little bit more original. But with that said, they executed it well, it vapes well, and the flavor I'm getting from it is nice. I can't say this enough, but with like all my first impressions, I'm going to spend a little bit more time with this Tugboat 24 before I review it. There's already reviews out there, but you know what? I just got it, and I need to spend some time with it before I do a review. So it is what it is. That's what you get with, uh, with Grim Green. Got a couple more first impressions here. I want to talk about this little guy. Do you see this thing? This is ridiculous. Do you see how small this is? Look at this small little thing. It barely fits in my hand. It's just a small, tiny little thing. This comes from Amigo, which I always call Amigo because they're Chinese. But I think it's Amigo. This is the Vogue Mini. And the pictures on the website make this look ten times taller than it really is. It's probably... I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches tall. And it's a little tiny 18350 battery in here. It's regulated to four volts. That's it. There's no adjustments. You have this little reflective part, and there's a little screen right there that shows you four volts. And it comes with the little Riptide Mini, which is a little sub-ohm tank that's a bottom fill sub-ohm tank. And you just kind of hold it and vape it? It doesn't feel very powerful. I mean, you saw the amount of vapor I got. Not really super impressive. If you take a really long drag, then then you can get some clouds where clouds. But if you take an average, normal, you know, human-sized drag... a little bit less this is a cooler vape it's a small little two and a half mil tank on top of a tiny tiny little battery i saw this at vpx i met the guy the rep whatever from amigo amigo and he's like hey do you want to try the vogue mini and i'm like oh you know maybe i don't know and so let me see it and he pulls out this tiny little thing and i'm like yeah dude i want to try that thing so bad it just looks neat it's like a funny little vapey thing. I mean, this would be great for someone who's not really box moddy. You know what I mean? It's not like a tube mod and it's not like, you know, an ego or anything like that, but it's a dinky little battery maybe for the females to throw in their purse and it's matchy matchy, which I like and the vape on it honestly isn't too bad. I find myself holding this with as little fingers as possible. Like I just hold it with two little fingers right here, thumb on the button. Ready? flavor on this Riptide Mini is actually pretty nice. A little 2.5 mil tank. The tank itself is only 18 millimeters around. Let me get to the battery specs on here. So they say it has an it, it's straight output um, of 4 volts, but that can be up to 50 watts depending on your resistance, right? Internal 1,500 milliamp hour battery. What? 1500 milliamp hour battery in here? There's no way to take the battery in and out. It's a closed unit. You charge it via USB right here. Interesting. I just thought this was interesting and deserved a little bit of video time. I, uh, pardon me. Ugh, pardon me, Rick. I, uh, may or may not ever review this thing, but I thought I should at least show it on video because it's such a funky, unique little thing. I first pulled it out. It says Mini Vogue on top and I showed it. Who did I show it to? It must have been Josh. And he's like, does that say Mini Vag? And I was like, no. It looks like it, but no, it says Mini Vogue. Anyway, it's a dumb, fun little fucking thing that I, I've honestly really been enjoying. I leave it on my desk and I just grab a few toots from it here and there because the flavor is actually pretty nice. And when you, you know you're in the mood for a cooler vape instead of like these 0.15 at 100 watt vapes, this kind of is filling that little spot right there.
anyway, that's dumb. That's just a little mini Vogue thing, and I thought I would just talk about it very briefly. So moving on from that, if anybody wants an Avocado 24 update, remember I did that vlog and I had the Avocado 24 and it was just making me so angry. What I did is I took the bottom O-ring off, and now that cap sits on there. It's still really solid to get down on there, but it actually sits fucking flush now and that was my biggest gripe additionally i just don't like the way this thing vapes i don't know that i'm going to review the avocado 24 i don't like the way that it vapes that's not true i'm going to put a couple more builds on this i'm going to try wicking it in different ways i've only tried it with a single coil so far this is a turk uh alien nope that's not an alien this is just a simple fused clapton in here it's like a five wrap came out to 0.17 I have it at 50 watch which means it's not even giving me three volts and that's the only way that I can keep up with the juice wicking if I wick if I rock this at any higher of a wattage it'll go dry on me like instantaneously and as it stands now even at three volts I get like two or three solid drags from it. I pop the top off, the wicks are dry, just dry. And I don't believe that I overstuffed the wicks in there at all. In fact, I find myself vaping it tilted, pointing at my face so that the coil is down and that the juice can actually like get to the coil. The flavor on it, meh, it's honestly not too bad. I'm just, ugh, I'm not a fan. You know what I mean? There's some things that are just not a good fit. I don't feel like the Avocado 24 is a really good fit for me for the way that I like to vape. Anyway, quick Avocado 24 update. So what do I have next? I have a box mod. Now this also comes from Flawless. This is their Tugboat, Tug Life unregulated series box and it's got a weird squishy button up here and it's really wide for a dual 18650 looking at it from the titan it's a full like two or three millimeters four maybe four millimeters thicker than that titan i just noticed it it just after using certain box mods like the titan or the m17 over and over and over again you get a feel for how they feel in your hand suddenly i grabbed this and i was like whoa this feels big. This feels like a big mod in my hand. I found myself holding it differently than I would the Titan. I find myself kind of using it differently than I would the Titan. What's interesting is the inside. You may or may not be able to see this, but there's a big electronics board behind these batteries, right? And then in the middle of the batteries, there's a huge 40 amp fuse in there. All these electronics are nice. There's like a PCB board in the back. There's what looks like a MOSFET in there as well. And like I said, there's this huge 40 amp fuse in there. Now, they don't include a ribbon for getting the batteries out. So I put this ribbon in here just behind the batteries so that I could grab the ribbon. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. So I could grab the ribbon and get the batteries out of there because without the ribbon getting these batteries out is a freaking nightmare there's these tongs right here tongs 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 tangs whatever you want to call them you put series style so positive up positive down and i put batteries in this i got this at vpx i put batteries in here and I couldn't figure out how to get them out. I'm like slapping them out of there like with all of my force and they're slowly wiggling out and slowly wiggling out. A ribbon would have gone a long way in this. And as it stands, I have to wrap a ribbon like this, my own little Lucy ribbon that it fell out of another mod so that I can get a ribbon in. God, they snap in there so snug. Getting these out is impossible without a ribbon. It is impossible without a ribbon, and it upsets me that Flawless did not include a ribbon in here. So ribbon, positive up, ribbon, positive down. So now, oh shit. Oh, I lost my ribbon. Ah, got it, okay, got it. So, I just kind of cradle those in there, pop the door on, all good. It'll fire like crazy. Now this is an unregulated series box, so, 
firing at like seven and a half, eight volts. Now I have the Sub-Zero RDA on here with a 0.4 ohm Fuse Clapton build on here. The vape that I'm getting from it is fantastic. It's a nice hot vape. I'm vaping this juice from Australia that I also got at VPX called Vape Vine. This is Moonflower, which is supposed to be a dragon fruit macaroon. It's a little bit perfumey, but overall it does have some nice like dragon fruity sweetness to it. Now, the button. The button on this is weird and I'm, I'm having a hard time getting used to it. First of all, let's look at these graphics on here. See how it's black with like red and purple lightning bolts? Eh, it's kind of cool, right? I mean, it's a little cheesy. I honestly would have liked maybe just a black one, but they didn't have black ones. So I ended up with the, the red and purple lightning bolts, which looks a little bit not as super neat or classy. I don't know, it looks fine. It, it's fine, it's just a little bit corny. It's a little bit cheesy, right? But I've been having a weird time adjusting to this button. When I first pressed it, it feels like a tactile switch. But when I press it, sometimes nothing happens. If you press it and then really press it in there, then it fires full bore. But if you're really pressing it in there and firing and you let off a little bit, the vape just disappears, but you're still kind of holding the button down. Every time you press this, you have to really press that button down, and I can't figure out why. It looks like a normal tactile switch, but for some reason, maybe it's just mine, I have to really crank that button down to get the vape that I want, but when it delivers, I mean, this is Noisy Cricket status, unregulated series box, that's great. It's just a great vape. So freaking warm. So freaking flavorful. I love, love unregulated series boxes. And I loved them with Fuse Clapton's. This is a 28 gauge with 40 gauge over it. No, 28 gauge with 38 gauge over it. I did a ugh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wrap around a three millimeter post. Great. Came out to 0.4. I love a high resistance Fuse Clapton on a series box. It's, it's honestly one of, if not my favorite vape experiences at the moment. It's just been awesome. But this button, getting used to this button, and the button itself is tiny. Can you see this? It's like a tiny little switch right there that sits completely flush with the body of it. And you have to really kind of crank it down. It's not just like a regular button that you can like... I don't know. It just acts weird sometimes. I'm still getting used to it. It just acts weird sometimes. But like with all my first impressions, I do need to spend a little bit more time with this Tugboat Tug Life Unregulated Series Box. It's great. It's honestly, I'm, I, I feel blasphemous saying this. I love the Noisy Cricket. Don't get me wrong. The Noisy Cricket can be kind of dangerous. This has a giant 40 amp fuse on the inside. Big PCB board in the back with MOSFETs. It's got a regular 510 on there. It's not a hybrid 510. It's not a hybrid series. So you can run most any atomizer on here and it will be safe. If <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> If the 510 pin isn't long enough, the mod simply won't fire. And if it does accidentally fire, you have this huge 40 amp fuse in there that will blow and not let you vent your batteries, which I think is, uh, I think is great. Series boxes are one of my favorite things now. Unregulated series boxes, I'm just a huge fan. And I'm really looking forward to vaping this Tug Life tugboat box way more. So yeah, what other first impressions do I have? I have a mech mod that I can't talk about yet. Ba -ba -ba! I think we're gonna wrap it up with this new tank. And uh, oh, we can talk about those coil heads real fast too. So I'm gonna pop this Indie Duo off of my Rillo. We're gonna talk about coil art for a second. So this is, this is that Aspire Cleto tank. Remember the one I was vaping and I, it tasted like rubber bands and everyone's like, no, you're an idiot. It doesn't taste like rubber bands. And I went, I'm sorry, mine tastes like rubber bands. I can only vape what I have in front of me and all my coil heads taste like rubber bands. Remember that whole thing? This is the Cleto tank and I loved the Cleto tank, but I didn't love the coil heads. So coil art makes Cleto coil heads. And guess what? Just guess. No, they don't taste like rubber bands at all. Let me turn this 
Oh, no, I'm going to leave it where it is. 93 watts, 0.22 ohms, 4.5 volts. This is a... Uh, what coil head is in here? I think this is the Clapton coil head in here. Um, Clapton, Canthal Clapton coil head, and it's been just pure rocking awesomeness on this tank. Whoa, that's hot. Okay, so maybe 93 watts wasn't a great idea. Let's turn this back down to, let's turn it, let's put it right at 70 watts. Now, the airflow on the original Cleto coils was very, very open, and I found myself turning the airflow down. On this particular Clapton coil, it's a little bit more constricted, so I can leave the airflow full open. Good. It's good. It's just flavor. It's no rubber bands or anything. I don't even know what juice I have in here. What juice is this? Oh, this is Sherbet in the Dark. This is Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark. It tastes brilliant. I get no rubber band. If you're a fan of the Cleto tank, which it's a great tank. It's, you know, a throwback. You could just go watch my video. I like the tank. I just didn't like the coil heads. Super easy top fill, big coil heads. I've put maybe 20 mils of juice so far through this coil head, and so far the flavor and performance has just been great. interested to try out the other Cleto coil heads. They have them in like twisted wire and parallel wire and Clapton wire and regular wire and I'm interested to see the different flavors I get and the different airflows I get but so far these coil light coils are pretty rocking on this Cleto tank but like I said I'm going to try a bunch of them out and just see how they go but coil art also makes a tank. They make this little guy right here. This is called the Mage and it looks oh <laughs> Looks a lot like that Moonshot RDA. This is essentially an upgraded 24 millimeter Moonshot and it is freaking awesome so far. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Like with all my first impressions, do I sound like a broken record yet? Good God. Like with all my first impressions, I'm going to spend way more time with it, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of a bitch to build on. Kind of a bitch to build on. Kind of a bitch to wick. But once you get it all together and you fill it up with juice, it's just a stellar vape. So this is 0.29 ohms. I'm going to leave it at 70 watts, 4.5 volts. It's got this moonshotty style sort of conical drip tip on there, and that's what you unscrew to fill it. It's a little, you know, two and a half mil tank. Let me get to the, let me just get to the mage. I found this on Vape Happy for 30 bucks. 24 diameter, 44 millimeters tall, three and a half mil juice capacity. I've been blowing through juice like crazy in this. Since I built it yesterday, I've probably filled it up like five or six times. Eight millimeter, eight millimeter vertical four post design, two millimeter post holes, three one millimeter times nine one millimeter adjustable airflow slots. I've just been leaving the airflow completely open glass tank for 2.5 millimeter wicking holes and the way that you wick this is exactly the way that you would wick the goblin mini you know what i mean you wick it you pull your wicks up you put the chimney on you cut your wicks and you stuff them down in there i thought for sure that this was going to leak the way i wicked it i was looking at it and i was using this new native wicks so native wicks where are they where are you native wicks yeah when native wicks first came out wasn't a fan that cotton that came in the like the little hockey puck looking thing and it was really dense and fibrous and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the vape I got from it. I didn't like building with it. I didn't like using it at all. Well, Native Wix has platinum blend now and it is pretty rocking. It comes in a long like uh, thing, like a long thing like this and you snip it and pinch and pull and wick. Here's one that I cut earlier. It comes in just a long, look at this long thing. Look what you get. Look at this long thing. It comes all packed nicely in this little thing and they gave me some of these at VPX and uh, I was standing there with Bud from, uh, you know, Bud Tattoo from Instagram. We out here though, uh, Fresh Gator J. I was standing there with Bud and I was like, I don't like the native wicks. He's like, yeah, you should try the platinum stuff. And I was like, is it different or is it any different? He's like, oh yeah, it's like completely different cotton. This P Native Wix platinum blend has been nice. I have four things wicked with it right now and it's been 
holding up really well. It's really easy to build with, really easy to work with. And I thought for sure when I wicked this, I thought for sure in my head, I'm like, this is going to leak like crazy. I just know it. So I filled it up and I took a couple toots and I'm looking. I, what I do is I get this up to the light and I look in that chamber where the airflow is. And if I see any drips happening, I know it's leaking like crazy. But no drips happening. So I'm like, huh, all right. Well, let's give it a little bit more time. Maybe it'll leak eventually, right? Vape, 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 vape the whole tank dry, no leaks. So I'm like, boom, done, awesome, stoked. Fill it up again, boom, 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 no leaks. It has been awesome, but God, it's kind of a bitch to build on. It's got the same moonshot deck, okay? And on the moonshot, the deck came out. This deck does not come out, but it spins, right? Weird, right? It spins. It's fastened in there, but it spins. So it's a little bit weird to have it attached to your mod, put the coils in, and try to you know, Allen key these things together while the deck can spin around. It's kind of a bitch to build on and it's kind of a bitch to wick, but I guess maybe I lucked out the first time building it because this has been amazing. And the flavor, oh, this, this is a solid, solid flavor tank. I don't remember what juice I have in here. Oh, this is Lowrider. This is that French juice Lowrider. It's like fruity menthol shit. And it's, oh, it tastes good in here. I am literally having a love affair with this tank right now. It's one of the, I've just been using it like crazy. And I'm generally a dripper. I mean, even looking at my desk, one, two, three, four, five, six drippers and two tanks. Six drippers, two tanks. I'm a dripper guy. I like dripping. I like the flavor I get from dripping. I like building and wicking drippers. Drippers are kind of my jam. It's kind of my thing. I really like it. This tank, ha! Huh, I find myself using it more than my drippers right now. Good, the Mage RTA. So, like with all my first impressions, I'm going to spend a little bit more time with this Mage RTA. I'm going to rebuild it and re-wick it a couple times before I feel comfortable talking about it. But right now, it's in stock at bvapehappy.com. 30 bucks. It's a fucking rocking tank. Okay, so this is a pre-order. So it's scheduled to release on June 2nd. Okay? June 2nd is when it's coming out. This is a pre-order. <coughs> Pardon me. What's in the news, Robin? And they kind of show you on here what the deck looks like. Yeah, it's a velocity style deck. It's it looks like a fucking moonshot deck. The the tank itself looks like a moonshot tank. You know, and I tried to give one of these to Ruby Roo. Ruby Roo, if you're watching this, this is something we're gonna talk about the next episode of the Culture Clouds podcast. I tried to give her one of these mage tanks. I said, Do you want this tank? And she's like, mm. No, she made that face. She's like, mm, tanks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, well, fine. I bet you wish you had one of these right now, Ruby Roo, because the vape I'm getting from it is freaking awesome. I think you would like this mage tank. And I know you're like me. You're not a tank person. And I'm only talking to you right now, Ruby Roo. I know you're like me. You're not a real tank person. You're a dripper. This tank is rocking, and I really think, I really, really think you would like it. It's a very, very drippery experience, and the flavor right now just slaying me. Just absolutely slaying me. And this conical, pardon me. Whenever you talk with vapor in your mouth, it, you sound like Kylo Ren, okay? I want everybody to try that. <laughs> try to talk with vapor coming out of your mouth. Say something like, Han Solo. You sound like Kylo Ren. It's hilarious. But, um... Don't even remember what I was going with this thought. Oh, the drip tip. This conical drip tip, the way it's shaped, super comfortable in your mouth, and it doesn't get a lot of gunk on it. I don't know what it's made of. I believe it to be just Delrin, but it's nice and comfortable and really polishy smooth. It's not like jagged. Like there's some Delrin stuff where you can see like machining marks on it. This is like the smoothest Delrin tip. The most, it's so comfortable when it just sits in your lips like that. Anyway. I don't want to over gush or get ahead of myself. Like with all my first impressions, I need to remain skeptical yet optimistic. I need to spend more time with this tank before I feel comfortable doing a full review, but I just want to say so far, it's knocking my socks off. I just love the vape I'm getting from it. And the airflow, Han Solo, 
and the airflow is great. It's smooth and swooshy. It's not quite like the Limitless, but oh man, it's so close. I need to stop gushing about this tank now. That's it. That's going to wrap up my first impressions. I told you I had a bunch of first impressions. Um, I'm going to save a couple things for next week. In fact, there's one thing that I have to save for next week, but... Uh, but yeah, there you go. All right, looking at my desk, no more first impressions. No more first impressions. So what I want to do now after the first impressions is uh, let's do a review for Thing That Never Got Reviewed. How about that? Reviews for Things That Never Got Reviews. So what we got today on Reviews for Things That Never Got Reviews is an RDA. And this is an RDA that I honestly... It didn't get a review because I kind of just sat on it, and that's my own fault. It's something that came in, and I built it, and I used it, and I was like, oh, this is a thing, and then it sat, and then I, you know, it got to the point where I'm supposed to do a review for it, you know, in my queue, and I'm like, all right, I have to do that next week. Didn't do it. All right, I have to do that next week, and then I go on a trip, and then I come back, and I'm like, all right, I got to do that next week for sure and then I just didn't do it and that happened a bunch <laughs> it just kept happening over and over again and I first got it and I'm like yeah it's an RDA I'm talking about the double vision RDA from Comfave and I first got the double vision and I was like oh it's a two post twisted messes RDA and Comfave look I like Comfave they're not one of these companies that's been super innovative I guess um, they released the El Cabron and it was like a big cloud chasing atomizer that had the same exact, you know, housing or whatever cap of the RDA and then that external airflow, you know, that external airflow on there. And I was like, cool, that's a, it's a fine RDA. I had Twisted Messes build it for me and it was cool. And then they released the Twisted Messes RDA and it was similarly designed. It was the same cap with that same external airflow on it. And then, you know, it has that ability to, you screw this down on top and you can use either that giant freaking drip tip on there or you can use the adapter on here and use your own drip tip on there. And I was like, okay, yeah, Twisted Messes, sure. I'll use that, we'll do a review for it. And then right after they released the Twisted Messes RDA, they released that 13 Heavens, Nine Hells RDA which was essentially the Twisted Messes RDA with a slightly different top cap and slightly different branding. But the core of it, the core of it was a Twisted Messes RDA. It was the same deck, same cap, same external airflow. The top of it was stylized slightly differently, but all the parts were interchangeable. You could use your big drip tip from your Twisted Messes and throw it on there, and then you could use the drip tip adapter from your Twisted Messes and throw it on there. And then, and then they released the Double Vision RDA. And when I got it, I was like, oh, it's the same cap from the Twisted Messes, same external airflow, same screw on top that you can either use the big drip tip on or you can use an adapter with your own drip tip. And I was like, eh, it's kind of cool, but eh, it's just a thing. It's just, you know, you might as well, I mean, I didn't see the whole point for it. Um, I, it's a two post Twisted Messes. That's what it was, is it was a two post Twisted Messes. I'm sorry, Comp Vape, if you're watching this and you're fuming at the mouth right now, but it was a two post Twisted Messes RDA. What was great about the, 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 the Double Vision is it came with two decks. So you got two decks. You got one top cap and two decks, which means you could have two builds with two juices going on here and just swap your cap back and forth and use it. Or if you had a Twisted Messes RDA and you bought the Double Vision, you could use your Twisted Messes everything on the, the Double Vision base. You know what I mean? So you essentially, if you bought, if you had the Twisted Messes version one RDA and you buy a Double Vision RDA, you have now two atomizers. You can use your Twisted Messes top cap on a two-post deck. And the two-post deck is nice. It's Allen keys on the inside. It's got this big positive post. It's got a big negative post. The negative post is machine, not machined into the deck. And anyway, the, the, the positive post is really in there sturdily with like a peak insulator on the inside. Big, giant, oval-shaped, oval-shaped post holes in there. And it's cool, but it just fell off my radar so quickly because 
I didn't really super enjoy using it. I felt like I had used this RDA like a hundred times before. I was like, I've tried the El Carbone, I've tried the Twisted Messes, I've tried the 13 Heavens, 9 Hells. Now I have the Double Vision, which is kind of just more of the same. And so what I did is I got my Double Vision here. This is the only Artemizer, what? Atomizer that I put like a, a fancy build on. Like I did a fused Clapton and then I paralleled it with 26 gauge Canthal. So it's kind of like a staged fused Clapton. Not staggered, but staged. So the regular wire heats up first and then the Clapton wire catches up to it, essentially. And I was pretty stoked. This turned out rad and I just kept using it. And it was really low. It was 0.11. So I have it on the Hooligan box once again. I have it set to 94 watts. It's giving me 3.2 volts. I'm going to juice this up and, you know, I'm going to vape it and see if it's as good a quality as I remember. I'm, I've am i wicked it up with that native wick stuff again. And I'm using Circus Peanuts juice. And I have a feeling... This juice is just going to give me a headache. It tastes, you know, when you taste the juice and when you smell the juice, it tastes like it has just a mountain of sweetener in there. It smells exactly like the Circus Peanuts candy, but uh, I have a feeling it's I have a feeling it's going to give me a headache. So let me get this all juiced up here. Go Native Wicks, go. All right, we are super juicy. So what I'm going to do is you take your top cap, you take your external airflow, and the external airflow on mine came in red, um, which is, bah, it's kind of a thing. Uh, not everything is matchy with red, and so a couple of the, you know, a red atomizer would look dumb on a blue mod. I just, it was one of those aesthetics things where I was like, eh, okay, it's red and it is what it is. So let's screw this together. I'm going to leave the airflow wide open. Put it on there. It's got the same O-rings on the bottom. It's got the same O-rings as the El Cabron, the Twisted Messes, and the Nine Heavens, Thirteen Hells RDA. It's very, very samey, samey. More of the same, more of the same. It's like those bands you listen to, like Slayer. Like it's a good band, but you know exactly what their next album is going to sound like. It's going to sound like a fucking Slayer album. They're not going to reinvent the wheel. They're not going to break the mold. They're not going to do anything innovative. It's just going to sound like a Slayer album. That's exactly how I feel with the Comp Vape RDAs. The next Comp Vape RDA that comes out is probably going to be a lot like the RDAs they've already released. In fact, they did release a new one called the Seminal, which is the Double Vision in a 24 millimeter. I mean, it's got that same band on the bottom with branding. With branding, it's got the external airflow. It's got the same deck. It's got the same top cap where you can use the big drip tip. It's just what Comp Vape does. That's just what they do. And I'm not trying to like rag on Comp Vape here because their atomizers are good. But their atomizers, the ones that they release, get they get a little samey. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's have a vape on this. I'm assuming it's going to be exactly as I remember it. Clouds grow clouds and lots and lots of airflow. That Circus Peanuts juice is actually pretty nice. Actually pretty nice. Yeah. Clouds grow clouds. Tons, tons of airflow. Okay flavor, but I remember this RDA being, yeah, you know, I've said this a thousand times already in this short little segment we've already had. It's very samey. It felt like I was vaping, especially because it uses the same size, big, wide bore drip tip. It felt like a Twisted Messes RDA to me. It didn't feel like anything new or innovative, and I was like, okay, cool. I used it for like a solid month. And then it went into the this needs to be reviewed area on my shelf over here. And I kept seeing it going next week, next week, next week. Uh, I have to do that next week. And then, you know, I go on a trip like I go to Ireland or something. And I'm like, next week, next week. And it just it got to be too long away. Now, nobody cares if I upload ooh the Double Vision RDA review. It's going to be really outdated. I mean, people complain now when... <coughs> <clears throat> when I upload the IPV version 5 video, pardon me, people complain now when I just uploaded my IPV version 5 video, they're like, bro, this mod's really old. And I'm like, it's two months old. That's it. This mod is two months old. If that's too old to warrant a review, then there's something fucking wrong with our industry. This is months 
old, multiple, multiple months old. So I have a feeling if I uploaded a Double Vision RDA review right now, people would just go, what year is it? Like, how old is this RDA? Anyway, anyway, clouds, bro, clouds, clouds for days, tons of airflow. That same drip tip you're used to with the twisted messes, that same airflow you're used to with the twisted messes, different deck, and it does, I'll give it that, it does come with two decks, which is kind of a cool thing. I would I would kind of rather have two top caps than two decks, but that's just me. Maybe two top de- two top caps with like different styled airflow, but this comes with two decks. It is what it is. I'll link in the description to the Comp Vape website where you can uh yeah where you can check it out if you're interested it's fine it's a fine little rda that will hold whatever build you want but just know it's not really anything fun or innovative you know it's a two post deck it's like we've had two post decks for a while now and uh it's a two post deck it's circus peanuts juice is overly sweet just Wow, very sweet. But I'm going to keep vaping it. I'm going to keep this around for a little bit because it's a solid RDA. And I know I I keep talking in circles like this. Talking in circles, talking in circles. But it's fine. It is what it is. It's the Comp Vape Double Vision. It comes with two decks and everything you're used to if you've tried a Comp Vape product before. Just clouds, bro, clouds for days. So what I want to do now is uh, I want to wrap this vlog up. We're going to get to a giveaway in a second, but I want to do, I got to do, I got to do my favorite comments of the week. (laughs) So this first one, this was a really old comment of the week. This was from January and I wasn't doing my favorite comments of the week in January, I don't believe. And so this one was kind of a a hidden gem and it got bumped back up in my Google notifications because someone else commented on it and I went, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And so this guy, Aldeed, commented on, um, this was the subs, no, what was this? Not the sub. Who makes the Sub Zero? This was the Sub Ohm Innovations Big Dripper RDA, and you know that just goes to show that a company can release a product that I hate and then turn around and release one of my favorite products ever. Because Sub Ohm Innovations went on to release the Sub Zero RDA, which I absolutely love. Then they made that hunk of shit, the Big Dripper, which I couldn't stand. I just hated that fucking thing. So this guy, this guy commented back in January on that video and said. Rotate it then, you dumb fuck. Lol. Fucking idiot. Also, even if you don't rotate it, you're supposed to fucking fill the juice well. Do that and the wicks will saturate no matter where the juice lands. Dot, dot, dot. For fuck's sake, you are the most retarded cunt. (laughs) I can't believe... I, I still... It boggles my mind that people get that upset about a vape review on YouTube. People get that upset about a vape review on YouTube. He called me the most retarded cunt. I am the most retarded cunt on YouTube. Thank you for your input, Al Deed. Uh, It was just totally, totally awesome. Let's get over here to this one. Uh, I know this guy was just trolling, but it still makes for good content. Right, Jacob Terman wrote and said, uh, this was on a vlog. This was on one of my previous vlogs. He wrote, uh, I love smoking cigarettes, listening to this stupid ass video. Vaping is for fucks, smiley face. It just cracks me up listening to this shit. Cigarette are way better. (laughs) Cigarette are way better. I wonder if this guy's from Boring And. Cigarette are way better. That's right, brother. You keep you keep smoking. Cigarette are way better. Uh, I got this guy here, uh, Brad Radcock, which is just kind of one of the greatest names ever. Uh, he wrote and said, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the video. I spent the whole time wondering if your nails were professionally manicured. Um, nope, they're not. Uh, Brad Rock Cock. Uh, Brad Radcock, sorry. Um, no, they're not professionally manicured, but I do clip them regularly and I do file them 
regularly. I do a lot of uppy closey stuff and you know having dirt and cruddy long weird fingernails uh, when I'm watching a vape video or any video where you see people's hands and you're like oh that guy has an extra long pinky nail ugh, and it's gross and you're like I wonder what that's for and it's dirty and no nah, I don't like it so I take care of my hands as best I can but no they're not professionally manicured. I do have one more in here one two three where did four go? I guess four is gone. Let's skip ahead to uh, let's skip ahead to five. Um, Scrooty Bob McGee. Uh, I don't know. I think he left this on a vlog. No, this was on Bro Trip. I think he left this on the Bro Trip video. He said, "Oh my God, people who vape need to get slaughtered and get some pussy." <laughs> This guy really hates vapors. Not only he wants us to die, but he also wants us to get laid. So, thanks. Appreciate that, Scrooty Bob McGee. I appreciate you looking out for me like that. You can be my wingman any time. So, yeah, that's my comments of the week. I got uh, ooh, I got some more. I think I'm going to save them for next week just because, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to do the comments of the week. But uh, what I want to do now, I don't know, let's do a giveaway. How about we do a giveaway? So... I met a fella at VPX named Marcel. That's right, Marcel. And he was there with his camera. And uh, he wanted me and Omboy OC to, uh, you know, pose for a, for a picture. And so we posed for a picture. And the picture came out freaking awesome. This picture perfectly describes me and Omboy OC's relationship. He is muscly and tough and I'm like the wussy guy and I'm hugging him like this. I want to do a Photoshop contest. Now, this isn't a Photoshop contest where you screen capture something from the vlog. This is a Photoshop contest where I'm going to make I'm going to link I'm going to leave a link in the description to Imager where this image is being currently held. You download the image and you Photoshop it in whatever way you see fit and then you send those submissions to contest at grimgreen.com. We're going to run this contest like we've run every other contest in the past. Today is Thursday, so you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and all day Monday to get your con- to get your submissions in. And then on Monday night at midnight, that's when the competition ends and then I have to go through and pick a winner. But what are we going to be winning? Let me get into my let me get into my goodie box over here. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of stuff in here. How about a tsunami RDA? Sure, let's throw that in the giveaway as well. How about a theorem? Anybody wants a theorem tank and a tsunami RDA? I think that sounds pretty cool. What a uh, what about a 454 zombie green big block RDA? That'd be cool as well, right? Two RDAs and a tank. How about a BMI Goldie RDA? Sure, gray BMI Goldie RDA. Three RDAs and two tanks. And lastly, how about something to run them on? How about a cool fire for 100 watt with temperature control? Additionally, how about a black 24 millimeter avocado? That is two tanks, right? Two tanks, three RDAs, and an Inokin Cool Fire TC 100 watt. This is a rockin' ass mod. You can rock all of these on this mod, and you don't even need to buy batteries. That's the best part. All you need if you win this competition is wire and liquid, and that's it. Well, cotton too. Cotton wire and liquid. If you have cotton wire and liquid, you can run any of these on this, and uh, there you go. You can even you know put some titanium and that geek vape or whatever you want to do. So yeah. That's what I'm going to do. That's going to be the giveaway. TC Cool Fire for 100 watt, a Theorem Drip Tank, a BMI Goldie, a 454 Big Block Atomizer, the Tsunami RDA, and a Geek Vape Avocado 24 Black Tank. There you go. That's going to be the giveaway. Look at all this stuff. This stuff right here. Yeah, it's all getting it's all getting given away. We're going to keep these going because I got a bunch of stuff to give away anyway. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put a link in the description. Let's just go over the rules one more time. We're going to try to keep this in the United States. If we can't keep it in the United States, that's fine. I can ship internationally, but we're going to try to keep it in the United States. You have to be 18. Nope. You have to be 21. Sorry. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. You have to be 21 to enter. 
Follow the link in the description. It's going to be in the other stuff area. And there's going to be a link. You little click on the link. It'll take you to the picture of me and Omboy OC. And then you can Photoshop it in any way you feel. Don't make it like super dirty. You know what I mean? If you make it super dirty, I'm just not going to show it in the vlog. Make it fun. You know, take what you know about me and Dwayne and make it into Photoshop. I'm really excited about this one. And I want to give a huge shout out to Marcel for taking this picture. Photoshop it in any way you want. Um, email those submissions to me, contest at grimgreen.com. That's contest at grimgreen.com. You have until Monday night at midnight, East Coast time, to get your submissions in. And, uh, yeah, then I'll announce the winner in the next vlog. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll have another contest in the next vlog, too. And I don't know why I'm talking so high. So, yeah, anyway, that's what I got for this week. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me in the vlog. I love doing the vlog. I love talking vape. I love drinking beer. And I love doing giveaways. And I love reading idiots' comments in a video. It's just fantastic. So that's what I got for this week. I'm trying to think if there's anything I forgot. Yeah. I think that's good. I think we're going to wrap it up. So what I'm going to do is grab my Relo RX200S with that mage RTA on there and just vape my face off for the rest of the day. But that's what I got, everybody. Please remember to join Kassa, not blowing smoke. Follow the calls to action. Fight for your vaping rights. We cannot, we cannot let the FDA get away with this. Be sure to thank Senator Ron Johnson. Be sure to check out all the links that I have in the advocacy section of this video. And uh, do your part. Fight for your right to have a less harmful alternative than smoking cigarettes. We should, as Americans, we should have that freedom to not fucking smoke cigarettes. Sorry. Don't mean to rant. Don't mean to rant. I'm going to wrap this vlog up. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping. Boop, boop.